Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really exciting video for you guys, which is a follow up to my USB network video that I did last week. So let's get started. Now I gotta, I gotta admit I was a little bit ignorant when I was making the first video because I did check out a lot of my stuff like Dongify and all these other companies where anytime that they were charging something, I just excluded them as a free option or something that, you know, was good, you know. So I gotta admit, I was a little bit ignorant when I was making the first video because anytime that I came across like Dongify or, or another company where they were charging to share your USB, I just overlooked it. So I just didn't really do my research on those exact companies and just went ahead and did my own open source version, you could say. Now, a lot of you guys on my last video did mention about virtual here. And I gotta say, this is an amazing software, even if it is a paid software, but the free trial is really adequate for what we need to use for. And honestly, the full version for $49, it's a one-time payment compared to the other companies I was looking up where it was like a monthly recurring payment. So for $50, yeah, this is a pretty good product, especially that A, there's no time limit. So you are allowed to share one device on the trial and it works on any operating system, it really does. It works on Raspberry Pi, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and it's so simple to use. So I decided to make this video to show you guys this method as well. You can still use my original method that I showed last week, but if you wanted something super simple where you don't have to worry about configuring or mod probe or all this other stuff, here it is. Now, just an example, this is not the installation part. You can see it comes with a super simple user interface. You just right click and attach whatever you wanna attach and it automatically picks up whichever computer has that software running as a server. Then it just works. And it works just as well as the original project that I was doing last week. It's just as smooth. Right now, instead of having the cheese program, I'm running OBS and it's just attached with the video capture device from my webcam on my Raspberry Pi. And I know some of you guys were also mentioning that you might want to use this as a streaming setup for a different type of camera view or something like that. Here it is. I didn't fix the resolution, but it works just as good. You probably could play around with it depending on your webcam. I honestly gotta say, I was a little intrigued on the original project uh, with uh, USB IP, where if you're gonna use it for Windows, you would have to t put it into a test mode so you could install the unsigned drivers. And you don't have that problem here. Installing it on Windows is really, really easy. It's just one program, run it, and then it'll install whatever it needs to as far as driver wise, and it'll get everything up and running. And the drivers are signed, so you don't have to put it into test mode or anything. So uh, let's get into it and I'll show you how to get this guy up and running. So I'm gonna close out of OBS over here because we don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna stop using this device and actually uh, close out of this program. I don't think I can because I'm in sudo mode. So first you would have to head over to virtual here and to the website and for USB server, oh, this is a cool thing I'm gonna show you, which is if you go into hardware, you could actually download an, uh, an image just for your Raspberry Pi and it becomes something called the cloud hub. And you could actually control your Raspberry Pi through this uh, menu, you know, you could just set up the Wi-Fi connection, set up whatever you want it to be. So if you want a dedicated Raspberry Pi model, they actually have an image for something called Cloud Hub. I haven't tried this yet. All I did was install the server for Linux. Now it also works on Android devices and your NAS. So why am I clicking this four times? And your NAS. So if you got a Synology NAS or um, QNAP or something like that, you could actually just add the app into it depending on what your device is and this would work right off your NAS device so you know that's gonna be running all the time instead of having to worry about your Raspberry Pi. One thing is if you do purchase this device, uh, it will be locked to that host or locked to that machine. So if you're running this on a virtual machine or you're running this on uh, NAS, this license key will be locked to that. You can't just transfer it to another machine when you feel like it, you're gonna to have to buy another license. But to be honest, if you need to share two devices, to buy a Raspberry Pi now, or even a Raspberry Pi Zero, it's less money than $50. And if you only need to share two devices, you might as well just buy two Raspberry Pis and you know set it up. Or like I said, you could you know set uh, purchase their license. And I think this is a super reasonable price. And I am 100% planning to get this. I just need to know which device I want to uh, put it on. I possibly might use this on my NAS and stick a hub on there and then I can just share as many USBs as I want. But the Raspberry Pi is much portable because I can move it anywhere I want to do. Yeah, I don't know, I gotta decide on what I wanna do. But okay, head over to USB server and you could do any server, Linux, Windows, whichever you want. 
I'm going to be hosting it on the Raspberry Pi, so it's going to be Linux. Now, you, all you have to do is just download a file. So you basically could copy, well, this is for x86, but if you need it for ARM right here for the Raspberry Pi, you click on this. It'll actually ask you to download this USB hub DARM. Now, I already did this. Oh, you know what? VNC viewer, let's pop open to my Raspberry Pi. I already did this over here and I downloaded this file. And all you have to do is run sudo VH USB DARM and it'll just run. Now, if you want to, you could, I'm gonna cancel this and you could run it with a dash B to run it in the background. So if I run the same program and I put dash B, it will run in the background and you won't see this here that says USB server is running, press control C to stop. It will just run in the background. By knowing that, you can actually go into your RC uh, local file. So uh, sudo nano slash etc slash RC local, this file here. And this will actually boot up a program right when you start your computer. So right before the exit, if you were to pop in the location of where your uh, program is, so in my case, it would be uh, home slash pi slash download slash uh, VH, what was that program called again? VH USB D ARM and put dash B like that. Every time I boot up the Pi, it'll run this program in the background. So it, it's easy to set up a startup file to run it every time you start up your Raspberry Pi. Now I'm gonna save this because I want that to happen. But in the meantime, what I am gonna do is show you. So if I run not in the background, I'm just gonna run this program. That's it. I don't have to worry about configuring anything, doing mod probe or whatever. It's gonna figure it out all on its own. And that's all you have to run. You don't have to do anything else. Now on the client side, say on my Linux machine right here, okay? What you would have to do is go back to the website, hit client, right? And then you could download their client depending on what system you have, Linux, uh, Mac OS. And I know you guys were asking Mac OS, it does support it. All I have to do is just download it. Okay, so for mine, I just download the Linux, which I already done. This is called a uh, virtual here UI or you could do the console version, but I'm using the UI. And if I change over to my downloads folder, you're gonna see a program called VHUIT64. So you will have to run this in sudo VHUIT64. Little program comes up, shows you that you're on the trial edition and it finds that it's on my Raspberry Pi IP and whatever port it's supposed to be. And yes, you could do this over the internet. And these are all the devices I have connected. Now, this is the hard drive that's actually running my, uh, my Raspberry Pi, uh, the webcam, and the uh, dongle for DaVinci Resolve. All I have to do is right-click, use this device, and it automatically will detect the device being used. And that's it. That's all I need to do. If I go into uh, OBS, as I was showing you before, you could see that uh, it pops right up because that was the last capture device that I was doing before. And everything is running just as smooth as if we were doing before. Now, what's cool is, um, I'm going to show you the Windows version, okay? So I'm going to disconnect this, stop using this device. Uh, pop over to my Windows. And this is, um, I haven't installed it yet, so I'm going to show you the full install process. Um, this is on my virtual machine. So this is a machine that I use, and I'm actually running Space Engineer Server on here. So hopefully I don't break anything. But I'm going to head over to Client and download the Windows version, and you're going to see the install. Super easy. Watch, uh, I need the 64-bit save the file okay run this and f the first time it runs it's going to ask you to install a driver so it's already detected that it's ready up and you could see that there's there's no task on the bottom but it's actually on your little uh, system tray and if i need to attach this it's going to say no driver installed you hit okay it's actually going to ask you to install the driver it's going to download and do whatever it is and there you go driver install package yes next let that go through, finish. Yes, I'm gonna allow that. And I don't have to install test mode or enable anything. And now it's used by me. So I think I have some sort of webcam, maybe? No, I, there we have it. This is my virtual machine that I have running on a server in you know somewhere else. And I'm sharing the webcam to my machine yeah, you see that? That's 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 pretty impressive. Just so we're clear, um, I believe. Let me let me give this a try. Just stop using the webcam itself, and I am actually gonna pop over. Oh, it actually asked me to install the Logic Tech stuff. Um, let me close this out. And does it stay running? Yes, it does stay running. See, so I can exit that. That's gonna close that completely. 
and I am actually gonna pop over to a Mac OS VM that I have. So let's go to VNC and VNC viewer right here. And I have a machine that is on 192.168.105.146, 146, I believe. No, no, 148. Yes, continue. All right, uh, there we have my Mac OS Mahovi. I'm actually running this off Proxmox. It's a VM, so it's not gonna be super quick. And you're gonna see I'm running off the VNC, which is uh, the share screen option that you could get on the Mac OS. Anyway, I did download this uh, virtual here DMG. I did not install it yet because I don't know if it's gonna break anything or, uh, or miss something that I'm gonna show. But virtual here, let's uh, pop this open. And it says, uh, you download from the internet, da, 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 da. I'm gonna open it, uh, minimize this a little bit. And this is the trial edition. It finds my Raspberry Pi automatically. It sees my webcam. So I'm gonna go over here and use this device. It's also gonna say, hey, drivers need to be installed. That's fine. I am gonna let the drivers install. So continue, install software. Now on a side note, if you're using virtual here, virtual here clients, 10.15 plus not supported. If you go in their forum, uh, they did get a way to get it to work. I think you had to like move a file or disable something and it should work. I'm not too sure about it because right now I'm on Mahovi, which is uh, 10.14. And I don't even know if it's gonna work on here because it says partial as far as like it's gonna work partial. So I don't know if it's gonna work 100%. But if this does work, oh my God, it's gonna be amazing because I have so many plans for this. Um, one of the things I do wanna do while this is still installing is um, set up a display link to my Mac OS. And the display link is one of those uh, USB to like VGA or something like that. So it gives it like another monitor running off the USB. And I wanna set up a display link to my Mac OS from my VM and actually have a physical console right here of my Mac OS. Okay, the installation was successful. So does that mean I could just run it without having to? Yeah, there you go. It's used by me. Do I have a webcam program on here? If I do uh, FaceTime, does it come up as a webcam program? Oh, that worked. My VM, well, virtual machine, my Mac OS virtual machine now has, I don't know why it's flipped backwards, but now has my webcam <laughs> that is attached to my Raspberry Pi. This is awesome. That means I could attach, like I was saying, a display link, a keyboard, mouse, and physically have a console sitting next to me. This worked as well, guys. This is my Mac OS that I was showing you before. I just installed uh, the display link drivers and I am forwarding the display link from my Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, if I was to move this window, that window moves as well. That's because it is synced, you know, it's mirrored display, but yeah. <laughs> It's actually working. It's actually working fat, smoother than my VM over here because it's like, you know, has that um, lag. But yeah, that's that doesn't have much lag. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to thank you guys for mentioning virtual here to me and I, being able to test it out and having so much fun with it. I do I really, really appreciate it. If you guys got any questions on this, uh, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.